I'm back with a little update on that Vivo Forge. So, as promised to a couple of, a couple of you guys, I would, thought I would show you how it can be used as a heat treat oven, heat treat knives, heat treat steel, um, with a few minor adjustments. Now, I did try this out, and it works, and it doesn't work. So, if you, want, if you wanted to convert this into a heat treating oven, it needs a few slight modifications to the oven itself. So, I'm, what I, I'm just going to walk you through, but it's very, very simple to do. It's a very simple fix to get this into a heat treating oven. The temperature is completely controllable. So, I held it at 800 centigrade, which is in Fahrenheit. For about 10 minutes I just walked away, I left it, I came back, it had only altered 1 degree centigrade in that 10 minutes, so it's perfectly good for maintaining the temperature. I've literally just put the forge on this little bench here and this is very, very just an ad hoc setup, it's not, you know, I'm just literally demonstrating how this can be turned into a heat treating oven. So I've stood it on its side, I've put a little packing under the back, the burner's coming in there so it's swirling around that way. I've just set these fire bricks up as you can see. So I'll open that choke out now. That is the Vivo Forge on full, full burn. I don't want that because it's going to get ridiculously hot down. This actually works better when the oven's hot, so I'll just put the fire brick on and let the oven heat up. So I have now got the forge running. It's currently at 860 degrees. This is a thermocouple, which I've just got this little vise holding it in place. And what I've got is this strip of metal here. Because what happens is the flame is coming in on that angle and it's swirling it around the bottom of the forge as it's supposed to do because it's heat, it's trying to heat up the crucible so it's running around the crucible. This piece of metal as the flame comes round it hits the piece of metal and then it goes back up so I'm going to place the blade in this case a file I'm going to place the blade just in there blade in the center. Now to further reduce the temperature I need to just close that choke down to stop the air going into the burner. You can see you can virtually, you virtually, you're really struggling actually to keep the temperature down in this little forge. But it is, it is burning. You can see, I don't know if you can see but there's a yellow flame now coming out of the front of the opening. So that because there's no oxygen going in with the propane as it enters the chamber, it's, the gas is using all the oxygen that's available so it's actually pulling oxygen in from the front so it's burning all the oxygen up inside the little forge there. So it, which reduces, which actually reduces scaling on the steel because there's no available oxygen to burn up the carbon in the steel. I always use an anti-scale on blades anyway, Condorsol. There's several different uh, anti-scale compounds you can use because it just makes a mess of the steel if you don't use it. So it's 788 degrees. That, that number is a tenth. So it's 788 centigrade, 0.9, 789. As it heats that file up now, that temperature will start climbing. And as I said, you really struggle to keep the temperature be around 800, although I did do it last night. I'll bring you, I'll take you back to the forge and uh, I'll show you how you can do that. <laughs> There's virtually no gas at all going in this forge at the moment. I've really throttled it down, the, the gas going in and the choke to the bare minimum. And it's climbing up now to 800 degrees. What you can do is pull these bricks apart further to let more heat out. It will pull more oxygen in, but it's being burnt up anyway by the propane. So if you open it up slightly, it will reduce the temperature inside. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to continue with this too far because there is a problem using the burner in this configuration and I'll show you what it is. The temperature's been holding steady. It's currently at 798 centigrade. 
and it's rising slowly and all I've been doing I've been making little tiny micro adjustments to the regulator on the thing so I'm turning it literally that much which slightly increases the temperature as you can see once the oven gets up to temperature it's much easier to regulate the temperature because you've got a hot environment inside so putting a little bit of extra gas in brings it up quite rapidly and then dropping the regulator you'll see that start to drop in a second reduces the temperature so that they are very very manageable these these little gas forges for heat treating you see it's I've just turned it down so the temperatures decreasing again now so all it they just need tiny little micro turns like that on the regulator to hold the temperature and what I do with my other gas heat treating oven once I've set the temperature I kind of leave this gauge and the gauge on my burner alone and I just turn the bottle off and when I come to heat treat I turn the bottle on I light the forge and I just leave it for five minutes till it gets up to temperature then I'm good so the chances are now that temperature is set that will hold in there for 20-30 minutes I just keep when I'm heat treating I just keep bobbing in and monitoring the temperature and just tweaking the valve or the venturi a little tiny bit you know reducing the air increasing the air intake on the burner but yeah pretty good pretty good so for that, that temperature is more than good enough you know for heating 1095 or one tool steel several several other of the lower carbon steels that's the target I'd aim for around 800 centigrade which is I can't remember off the top of my head in Fahrenheit I'll put it on the screen yeah that's a good rock steady little temperature very very tiny small amount of gas going into that burner so that piece of copper pipe is slid down and it's just allowing that much air to get in if you reduce these the burn rate too low you can the, the burner can go out but still allow gas to enter but when the forge is sort of at this temperature the gas reignites again so you're not going to get a massive explosion but with gas without regulators and valves and thermocouples and things fitted on the line I never just walk away and leave my burner I'm always kind of hovering around and it's only 10 or 15 minutes that I have to be in here I'm usually doing something else while it's heat treating so I'll pull that file out now because it's been in there about 10 minutes and I'll just show you what I mean about uh, the discrepancy in the heating along its length just checking the thermocouple down here it's 801 centigrade this file now or on the end of the thermocouple and you can see where the colour is now you've got colour there and this is darker that is actually inside the forge but you've got a dark patch here and I'll show you how to fix that so you can see why I put this in because it's stopping the flame curling around and hitting the blade Right, so the way to fix that heat discrepancy, as in the forge is only heating up to about that length because this is the end that the flame's coming in. If the burner was in the centre of the forge, then you'd get a more even heat distribution, but you would also get a hot spot about three to four inches each side of the burner. And the way to fix that is this. You put the burner in through the top on the back and what that does, it, it puts the gas along the top. It heats the top up and it radiates the heat down and that's how my heat treating oven works. So you would need to cut a hole where the refractory is, say about there, about, get about an inch and a half of refractory and lining. You would put a hole there and then you would poke the burner into the back and that would then blow the gas over the top and out towards the exit. And what I've done is I've positioned the burner in the front like that just to show you that that is how it would work so it's currently blowing gas in it works more effectively if it's at the back blowing gas out because it sheds the excess heat through the inside so it's actually it's getting more heat in there than it should do really now with the burner being in in that position so that that's what the burner's putting out virtually virtually no gas whatsoever you know it's right down on the regulator both regulators just a little bit of gas coming in and that will be in the back of your forge throwing the gas out to the front I don't want to, <laughs> I just don't want to cut a hole in the bottom of this little furnace because I'm going to use it as a melting furnace I've already got a heat treating oven you know Well, I hope 
hope that helps somebody out. My, my gas forge is here. And I will say with a caveat that the bigger the internal area is in your heat treating oven. So I've got uh, a cut down old gas bottle shell. The internal is about that big. The oven is about that long. It has got one burner running in the top at the back. The controllability of that forge is amazing because when you heat up a larger area, that area is easier to control with temperature than a small area because a small area reacts so much faster to the heat input and output of that area. A larger area, it takes time to adjust, you know, because it's got to heat that whole area up. So that is why a bigger oven is probably slightly better because it's more controllable and you can get bigger knives. If I was going to use that as a heat treating oven and I didn't already have a heat treating oven or two heat treating ovens, I would modify it, like I said, by cutting a hole in the top and slipping the burner in there and then just propping the burner up. Then if I wanted to use it as a smelting forge, I'd stand it back up, I'd plug that hole with some kale wool, the ceramic the ceramic tile that sits in the bottom would then cover that hole so I could then reuse it as a smelting furnace. So it's just really versatile to use it like that. But you'll get a you'll heat treat a 12 inch long blade in it, that's blade and handle. No, shouldn't have a problem doing that. You might just have a little bit of a cooler spot where the back of the handle is. But doesn't matter on a knife, does it? Anyway, I want to clear the bench, guys. So I wanted to do this because that forge has been on the bench for a couple of days now. Because I've got two huge billets here <clears throat> that I want to forge down. It's quite a really complicated billet setup, this, which I'll be videoing for one of my next videos upcoming. So there's three different types of steel in various configurations and... It's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a very very difficult billet to build. I've just bought a Forest Master 60D, I think it is wood chipper, uh, for use on the allotment for shredding up all the waste stuff to compost. That's coming today, so that's why I'm in the forge, just waiting for the delivery guy to come. I bought that. It's not uh, it's not been sent for free or anything. So I'm also going to do a review for that over on the veg plot my other channel where I grow my own food. Thank you to my patrons and once I get the forge set up in the next week I'm going to smelt some brass and aluminium and make another alloy and hopefully I'm going to make some a couple of two or three nice little things that I can send and give away to my patrons so see you all soon. Please hit the like if you like. Alright guys bye for now. <laughs>